Ah, I don't trip over wires. Did I press record? All right, guys, I'll be having a great one. So we're doing a weird food thing today because, well, we can and I want to and I'm going to. So that's all the reason that we need. So what we're going to be creating today are hipster chips. Now, you may be wondering, what are hipster chips? Now, these are chips that only take seven to ten days to make. Oh, yeah, that's rapid lightning speeds. Now, we're going to be using a fermentation process called lacto-fermentation. It's used for food preservation. It's been used from times of old. It's supposed to be really healthy and really good. But we're going to be deep frying these, so that kind of counteracts any of the good stuff in there. But we're just, it's for the flavor and the taste. They are interesting, interesting chips, and uh, I want to make them. So we're going to. So we're fermenting potatoes to make chips in about a week and a half. Ah, I can already taste them. Mmm, so good. Right, so to make these hipster chips, you don't really need that much. All we need is some water, some salt. Now, uh, as long as it's not iodinized salt, you're all good. I believe you can even use low salt. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Haven't tried. I have no need for low salt. A cabbage. In my case, I'm using a sweetheart cabbage. Ah, oh, isn't that sweet? That's because it was cheap and I can also make coleslaw out of it. And then to make our chips, we're going to need potatoes. But I suppose you could use any vegetable that you wanted. Carrot chips, parsnip chips. Oh, anyway, you can do any, any veg that you want. And we're going to need a bucket, a brewing bucket. It doesn't matter if it has a little nut because we're going to be weighting everything down. So uh, let's begin. So in order to make hipster chips, we need to, uh, to cut the potatoes just like, uh, oh, there we go. Fantastic. Lovely cut up chips. Awesome. So the original recipe said to wash them and remove all the starches. But um, you don't need to do that, you, you don't. So we're not going to, we're just gonna dump them straight into our fermenting bucket. Cause we're, we're cool. Now the fermenter just needs to be cleaned with some dish soap. You don't have to go on that either sterilizing it. Cause we're, we're gonna be taking all this bacterial stuff and killing it off with mass genocide either way. So uh, in goes our lovely chips. Oh yeah, that's, that's only a couple of chips. Looking good. So now all our chips are in the bucket. All we've got to do now is add the cabbage. Now you can do it without the cabbage, but it takes a lot longer. Um, the cabbage is, well, it's normally used in fermented products because well, it just, for some reason, it works really well. So you can cup up the cup up. You can cut up the cabbage, but I found it is a pain when uh, you're trying to weigh it all down. So I'm going to be using five leaves. You don't have to worry about them. They just chuck them in. There's three, there's four, and there's five. I can see all those health nuts turning, cringing, but it's okay because these are deep fried. So no one cares. Right. So now we've got our cabbage and our lovely potatoes in our bucket. So all we got to do now is make the brine. And that's really straightforward and easy to do. So uh, let's do that. So to make our brine solution is very, very simple. You need some water. Now, if you've got a filter, you can pass it through a filter, but it does work with tap water. If your tap water doesn't taste like a swimming pool, just putting that out there. So for every one liter that we've got here, you take about 50 grams of salt, which is, it seems rather a lot. Now, if you are in America and you use quartz, quartz are 948 mil, which is still basically a liter. So basically just follow the 50 grams, which is approximately three tablespoons. A tablespoon is 15 mil for those people that don't know. 
So the idea is we're gonna add water into our lovely solution, just enough to cover it all. Cause well, if we have anything submerged, and uh, if we have everything submerged, we need it submerged. If we have anything sticking out the top, that's where infections and nasty things can happen. And we don't want that to happen. So we need to make sure it's all covered, but uh, just covered, not you know, swamped. So in goes one liter, which I've measured using a jug and not the kettle. So in that goes. And uh, it looks like I'm going to need another liter. So I'm just gonna go grab another liter of water. So I've got my other liter of measured water. Check me, like a boss. In it goes. Right, and now all my stuff is covered, so when I weight it down, none of it is going to be on the surface, that way it's not going to get infected, because uh, we don't want that to happen. We're going to the trouble to make these hipster chips, so the uh, last thing I want to do is have moldy chips. kind of defeats the purpose. So uh, we're going to have to make our brine solution, and me being clever, it doesn't have a pair of scissors. And I know if I use a knife, it's going to go everywhere and just explode and... It'll be funny, but at the same time, I'll be picking up salt for years. There we go. A pair of scissors. Saved me tons of time having to take all this off the floor. So, we're going to be making a 5% brine solution, which is 50 grams of ah, salt per one liter. A quart is slightly under, but it's basically the same. We're going to be using a tablespoon measurement because they're pretty much exactly what we need. Now this is two tablespoons worth, because well, I don't have to do it six times. Two liters equals six tablespoons, so uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add in three of these, and I'm gonna be careful to make sure I don't go over that, because uh, they were a little bit salty for my liking, but I was paying a little bit fast and loose with the salt last time. So there we go. Now all we have to do is mix in the salt to make the brine solution and I'm going to do it all in the bucket because uh, I'm cool like that. So I'm going to use the old hand, but it has been cleaned. Might as well just get stuck in. Mix it all around. That is a salty solution. There we go, it just saves having to put salt on your chips when you finish cooking them. That dissolves surprisingly easily. So if you want, you can scritch up the cabbage, but at the same time, we're not really making a fermented cabbage like sauerkraut. We're just using it there to speed up the fermentation. There we go, looking good. We have a salty brine solution. Yep, we have a salty brine solution. Need to wash my hand. Back to having clean hands. Don't want to lick the chips now. It is a salty solution. It's actually not as salty as it was the last time, so I suppose measuring it properly is a good idea. So the only thing left to do now is to weigh down all the cabbage that's floating on the top. Now the easiest way to do that is I found a plate. If you're using one of these uh, sort of one gallon containers, you can use a bag filled with water, Ziploc bags and all sorts. Whatever it is that you use, just make sure it stays under the water line. So in goes our plate. So elegantly done. Now I'm just gonna push the plate down just to make sure it is underneath the water line. That way the cabbage and the potatoes are definitely submerged. And uh, that is pretty much done. We don't have to put a lid on it, but I'm going to because I'm cool. And plus it just peace of mind. There we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put it somewhere warm, just like we would if we were fermenting alcohol. And we'll be back in about 10 days, which is pretty cool. So there we go. Part one of making hipster chips. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, Subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing, because well, this is homebrewing. Eh, check that. See you later, guys.